Right, Barrett? You know there's a ladder there, right? Yeah, I guess. That makes sense, right? Dude, this area is so cool. And to think this area in the original is just like a few a few little bushes you walk through. It's turned into this. Well, the bushes you walk you walk through to get to Cosmo aren't optional. But yeah, I know what you mean. And Gaga itself is optional, but like I was talking about like when you go over the river and there's like that huge thing of just trees that you have to drive through. That's what I'm imagining this is. And they just reimagined it to be the path to Gungaga instead of it being separate. Oh. Unless we go through another jungle later, but I kind of doubt that. My guess is that this is the one and only jungle. Okay then. One more shot. <laughs> Boom! Yes, Gungaga itself has a circle of jungle around it. Which is where a lot of people fight the... Stone breathing dudes for the first time. But to me, this is a reimagining of, like, the entire section up to Cosmo Canyon, where there's, like, that whole river and woods. I know I said that Yuffie is overkitted, but I think Aerith is the strongest character I know, overall. But she doesn't have a lot going on, like just damage really. <laughs> she can't dodge, she can't pressure, she can't really do anything, but she just does a million damage. She doesn't even really support that much. Most of her stuff just helps her. He, 
her biggest weakness is how slow her ATB fills up, but if you use uh, Radiant Ward, it fills up quicker. Can't get any results out of her. I don't know how you missed... I don't remember where the Radiant Ward weapon is, but... Get Radiant Ward. Use it. Use Arcane Ward. Win. Question mark. It's kind of all I'm doing. Sorcerer's Storm also does a million damage. We have to be close. Telling him where we are, you furry fraud! Guilty! I knew this cat had two faces! Ah, come on now! I'm only pulling your leg! Who are you kidding? You were literally built by the company! Probably stuffed you full of teeny tiny listening devices! Teeny tiny? The late president believed the bigger was always better. Small went against his philosophy. Doing well, huh? Some nine to five nobody you are. Sure your name ain't stamped? Hey, sure. Hi. Might want to check. With how much they're joking about it, I feel like he's not gonna turn on us. Come on. That's it. Huh? Get him. Huh? Huh? I mean, even Soul Drain, even Soul Drain does a ton of damage. And gets your MP, but like, look, it does a thousand damage. It's supposed to be a move that just gets you MP, and it. Does like a million damage. I mean, she is just outputting crazy damage. Like, I'm not doing anything special. Sorry, but I got She is just doing a crap ton of damage. With me. Okay. Oh. Screen got really dark for no reason. I paid the enemies to stand still. I bribed them. I have the special Square Enix copy of the game. I have a review copy of the game. All the enemies stand for, like still, so I can kill them. Go on. Aerith, why are you so close? Also, Sorcerer's Storm immediately puts them in pressure, so as long as I whack them, they can't move. Oh. That streamer privilege coming in clutch. My Square Enix dad works at Nintendo. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I ever said. <laughs> Big horn bracer. Miss a chest like over here. You caught me. 
My dad doesn't work at Square Enix and Nintendo. He only works at Square Enix. You got me. You got me, guys. No way. Oh, you need a chocobo. I already know. You don't need to tell me. It's a big thing. It's just chocobo. It's a big chocobo sign, and it says up. I already know what it does. You don't have to call me and tell me. Chadley. Gongaga. I'm freaking starving. Maybe our lucky food will be on the menu. You have a lucky food? I kind of accidentally went the correct way. Mushrooms. You're a little too excited about that. By in Midgar, but here, here you can't even for the blasted things. Wow. <laughs> Kate Sith is honestly a riot. This is new. Passing through. Another character. You. What? Uh, nothing. For a second, I thought you were someone else. I like the Crisis Core sounding music already. Who are you people? I. You'll do. More importantly, why are you here? Not to survey the reactor, I presume. Ah, no, just to study it. We're on a wee field trip, you see. Well then. Wow. Aww. Welcome to Gungaga. I'm Sisne, Coalition Captain. Oh, cat's out of the bag now. And sorry, didn't mean to startle you before. Just doing our jobs. Back to your posts. But I thought. So I was thinking, like, okay, this is gonna be Sisne before she changed her name. And we were finally going to get to learn her real name. But her name's still Cisne, so we still don't know. <laughs> You'll get a clear view of the reactor from that hill. Make sure to pay your respects, though. Of course. That's crazy, man. Come on. They're never going to tell us her name. I thought this was finally their chance. Finally their chance to tell us. Like, it all made sense. It was like... But see, this... Yeah, I mean, this happens after that. I mean, it's weird, because it's remake, so it's like... Technically... The events of Crisis Core could have not happened. Like, we don't know. But, like, if Crisis Core happened in this time... In this... Continuity... Then it would have happened before. But, like, who is this? I didn't play Crisis. Okay, so Cisne is a Turk that's in Crisis Core. She does the Turk thing, and then she quits the Turks um, before Final Fantasy VII starts. So you never get, you never see her in Final Fantasy VII. Um, but she's a Turk in Crisis Core, and she's friends with Zack... Um, more so than the rest of the Turks. The Turks and the soldiers worked together, but they weren't necessarily, like, buddy-buddy. But Zack was pretty buddy-buddy with all the Turks, especially Cisne. And then at the very end of Crisis Core, 
Cisne is ordered to kill Zack, and she doesn't because she likes him too much. And then she's like, you go and I'm gonna disappear. And then she says something about maybe one day I'll even tell you my real name. And then since then, we've never heard anything about it ever again. We never, like they've, hold, they've held on to this secret ever since the original Crisis Core. They randomly have her drop, by the way, this isn't my real name. And then never again have we ever heard anything about Cisne or her real name or anything. It's just like this, this funny mystery that's always been there. But because this is another continuity, we're saying, okay, Cisne left the Turks and ended up in Gungaga. This was their one moment to like, maybe tell us her real name and they might still, but. But this is really interesting because this kind of tells us where she went. Let's keep it that way. Um. I don't get a lot of visitors, what with the jungle. Can't even remember the last time. Like but I said, different continuity, so perhaps in Crisis Core she doesn't come here, but this gives us a potential of where she went afterwards. This charm, I suppose. <laughs> Her real name is Sis, yes. Ago, the reactor here suffered a catastrophic failure. It was old and couldn't handle the stress. It needed maintenance, which Shinra never provided. And then one day. So, they're cheap as well. <laughs> this was the company's way of trying to make amends. I'm surprised they even made the effort. So am I. And thanks to the hard work of our people, Gongaga rose from the ashes, right? That's nice and all, but one memorial doesn't buy absolution. You guys must be tired. I know you've got things to do, but if you wanted to rest up... Wouldn't they say no? Man, I did not even recognize her at first, there. like... Got an open door policy, so feel free. To be fair, the last time we saw her was on a PSP oh, game, I but... I'm, uh, gonna take a look around. Seriously, get some rest, okay? And obviously her outfit's completely different. And she's missing her giant ninja star. I wonder if we'll get to see her giant ninja star. Because, I mean, we we got Yuffie. We already got our fill of ninja stars. Those Gungaga mushrooms you found? They're all yours if you want them. We got more than our fair share. Telling species apart can be difficult. What looks like a Gungaga mushroom may in fact be poisonous. For me and my nose, the difference is obvious. But for someone like you, well, let's find out. Which of these do you think they are? I don't know, I, I didn't see the real ones yet. Or, I wasn't paying attention to the real ones. <laughs> I already ate them all. Uh, that's gonna be these ones. Right ones. I'm dead. Correct. I suppose this scent does make it rather obvious. I'm a genius, guys. Total guess. I mean, the left ones looked poisonous, but. Other than that, it was a complete guess. See how they dry their mushrooms here? 
bet they'd make for a mean stock. Doubt there's much it wouldn't improve. Soups, pilafs, maybe even a pot roast. What sort of thing would you go for? Dude, I want a pot roast. I'm gonna go with the pot roast. Ah, uh, why does that not surprise me? I remember mom saying how Claudio's was the best she'd ever had. Kind of... If you tell me what it was like, <laughs> I could try and make it for you. How was I even gonna know that that was gonna improve our relationship? I see a piano. And the music guy. Cinco de Chocobo. Blink, ba blink, ba blink, ba blinky, blink, 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 blinkity, plonk, blinkity, plonk. Blinkity, ba blinky, 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 plonk, blinkity, ba plonk, ba blinkity, plonk, plonk. It's the shortest one yet, but has almost as many notes as the longest one. faster <laughs> oh we're gonna play both parts of it. that's cool play like two beats at once because if they do it's going to be a disaster could you imagine Sierra, thank you for the brand new Prime. Really appreciate it. That will get you into our grand prize giveaway. Thank you very much. <laughs> My Uncle Jim Tendo. Was gonna match the other one. R.I.P.
RIP my second try star like the last one. Yo, thank you so much, Shear. I really appreciate that. It's good having you here. What do you got, old man? To you. Steadfast block. Mellifluous melodies are all the more pleasing. This is a level two. On the piano. Thank you for sharing such joy with the world. I hope you will enchant us with even more splendid performances in time. Well, I got more performances for you. Don't worry about that. I see Queen's blood. Children of the planet, open your hearts to the words of our mother beneath your rich fertile fields. Oh, I, I thought I was about to play against the cow. Thought I was about to play against Betty. Betty the cow. Come now, that's enough. Can't you see you're scaring the poor man? Sorry for all that. It doesn't take much for them to get worked up. I'm Jijun, a farmer. I should be hard at work, but my back's forcing me to take a break for a short while. Oh, do you play Queen's Blood by chance? A game would help to pass the time. Sitting around soaking up the sun is all well and good, but at this rate, it's liable to put me to sleep. <laughs> First-rate cow duelist with a first-rate cow deck. I do like this guy because he has a diagonal, but he's three. This deck's done me well. I'm sticking with it. Cow level? Mm -hmm. 
Play the middle, I dare you. It's not the middle. He's got a frog. Why is the frog doing a what do you mean? you got you got a diagonal because if not you lose you lose hate to see it you do hate to see that Deck's kind of unbeatable. Great Malbro. Holy moly. That thing seems dope. I think that's my best. I can't. Didn't I have like a 50 before? Aren't you something? Why, you were running circles around me like. One of those professional racing chocobos. So is that how all you young folk play these days? Oh. Us young folk. Green's blood sure has changed. Us old timers can't keep up anymore. Mm. But you know, that's exactly the way it should be. You're better off harnessing that energy. Well, you've still got enough to live life to the fullest. You can sit and relax to your heart's content when you get older and your back starts giving you no say in the matter. That's why you should spend your youth getting up to all kinds of mischief. <laughs> if you ever tire yourself out, though, I'll be here with my cards. A little downtime can do a body good. I love how they just put, like, the most humble old guy here randomly. <laughs> Most humble Queen's Blood player. Back to Euchre, Grandpa. Hey, I like Euchre. Don't be making fun of Euchre. Dude, Gungaga looks pretty sweet. Every now and then I see these weird black clouds near the reactor. I love how like in the jungle it is too. It definitely did good. You ever heard about oh, you flying? I thought you just wanted to chew the fat. I do want to chew the fat, but I also want to buy your car. What? What's the matter, Oscar? Do you want to play a game? Ah, you there. I'm playing against Don't the Chocobo. Can tell, but you're into Queen's Blood, aren't you? Isn't that great, Oscar? I found someone you can play <laughs> Don't against. ask how I can tell. Let me introduce you. He's got this like goofy goggles. Smith. He's a watch Chocobo. A huge Queen's Blood fan, too. He gets cranky if he can't play at least one game a day. So, how about it? Mind going around with him? I'll kick his butt. I'm gonna get destroyed, aren't I? 
Raise the power of allied cards on affected tiles by three. That's only a one? Dang. And it's worth two? I think I like that better than the crab. Look at this guy. Holy cow. This dude's like chaos. Wait, this guy would be really dope to play in the back line. I'm about to take out both my crabs. So I think those will just be better crabs. Chocobos play Queen's Blood Hype! Uh, I was hoping I drew one of my new cards, but... Yeah, the crab's a good card. Don't get me wrong, it is a good card. Also, he didn't play the middle, so... He's about to feel the wrath if I draw a one. Oh! I wish it had been a... up one, but... This is still pretty brutal. Oh, why would you play there? What are you doing? This chocobo just got sent to chocobo school. Yikes. Actually, yikes. Actually, for real, not even kidding, not even messing around. Yikes on that one. You hate to see that. What a bird brain. <laughs> All right. He's already dead. Let's let him have some of his dignity. I can't believe I actually played all the way into his back line without destroying any cards. I have a card in his back line. Ooh, another overwrite card. I might be using that. This is the first time I've ever seen Oscar lose. Didn't expect that. Really? Because he got smashed. <laughs> Seems like he's a little bitter. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for indulging him. He can make it a lot harder for us to do our jobs when he's in a mood. Really? Believe it or not, he's going to make his television debut soon. He'll be up against a dog that plays Queen's Blood. And we have to make sure he wins to help drive up tourism here. That's... <laughs> He'll pull it off. That's funny, because when we played the dog, I was like... They said something about the animal tournament, and I was like, the Chocobos play? Sure enough. They do. No, that was an actual Bork Bork dog that played in Coral. Got anything I can fix my hole with? This dude dropping bars over here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Was catching up on sleep. <laughs> the second I walk in, you got anything I can fix my holes with? The holes be out of line. I need something to fix them up. Calm down, buddy. Jeez. Is that it? Oh, there's only two players? Wait. Yo, good to see you, Cloud Hopper. Jumping over there. 
props. It's break time, boy. This must Hey there. Good to see you again. Since you're here, mind if I snap a pic of a fun guy with some fun guy? Don't. Don't do that. What? Why is he doing that? Cloud. This restaurant hired me to grab a couple of shots for them to use in their menu. What I'm was that? To the freshest Gangaga <laughs> mushrooms I can find. Gonna get pics of the scenery while I'm here. Make the most of the opportunity and all that. Let me know if you find anything picturesque. What this was that? Po Gangaga's <laughs> famous mushrooms. Is he channeling his inner Zach now? Because we're in Gungaga, he's channeling his inner Zach. Some like curtsy pose. That was crazy. Animals have been acting strange recently. <laughs> Proto cross reference. I mean, oh no, it's freaking Chocolina in another universe. I got a lot of golden plumes. Uh, so I can't. It's kind of weird. I can't see the bonuses these give. These give bonuses in the races, but you can't actually see what they give until you go to the races. So I'll do Treasure Hunter. No, when you go to the races, they actually give bonuses. Gotta get the rodeo hat. Ugh. Sorry for all the yawning. Can't stop yawning. Can I make anything? Ooh, I can make these finally, but they're totally outclassed. But I can make them. I'm really confused by these armor upgrades. I figured you would get like copper wood sprite and then you would unlock sailor's gold, but you'd also get the upgrades for the previous ones. Or I think actually you just had these from the beginning. So I figured you'd always get these and then you get upgrades for each one. But for some reason, it's only the first ones you've been able to upgrade. for some experience. Choco buddies. You know what? Can have these. forward in the story because we only got like 15 more minutes but 
I think we're stuck here until we do the thing we're supposed to do. Unless I can just... I'm sure, I can't go out that way. I can't go out the other way either. We're gonna, gonna talk to people. What you doing over there, Aerith? I think we know what she's doing. Oh, Cloud. Friend of yours? Come in. Please. Hmm. Your eyes. You're a soldier, aren't you? Um, was. You wouldn't happen to know our son, would you? Zach? Are you all right? Fine. What did you say his name was? Zach. Zach Fair. Zach? Sorry. No. Our son just up and left one day, determined to chase his dreams. At first, he wrote us all the time, but... When I first saw you, I thought, maybe this is the girl he was always talking about. Sorry if I made you feel uncomfortable. I doubt I was the only woman in his life. Charming guy like Zack. <sighs> <laughs> Wherever he is, I hope he's enjoying himself at least. They do say no news is good news, right? They sure do. Uh, I don't know if that pertains to this, say, but okay. If you do happen to see <laughs> Zack, would you tell him that we miss him? And to please get in touch. Of course I will. I like the... You should probably be heading back, don't you like think? the design of his parents. What? Already? At least have something to eat before you go. Thanks, but we don't want to keep our friends waiting. <laughs> Another time, then. Yeah, they're so nice. I mean, they kind of were in the original too, but I was just saying, like the visual design of them. Here. It you know continues to amaze me the attention to detail, but like they don't look like every other NPC. You know, they. I mean, they really stick out, and they do look like Zach, but even. Even more so than that, they, they have a lot of detail in their design. Hey. That wasn't very nice of me. Yeah, you're kind of a jerk. You remember me telling you about Zack, right? At the playground? How he was my first love? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the, that was so that was so well done. Like that was such a perfect yeah. That's a, that is the yeah I would give in this position. Like it felt like he was trying to swallow and say it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was so well done. This is where he grew up. <laughs> and now that I'm here, it's a lot. So when I saw someone who looked like him, I don't know. I had to say something. Didn't even occur to me to think how they would feel about it. Pretty selfish, huh? Waltzing in there, stirring up memories. Yeah, you might have crossed the line. You're too hard on yourself. Bet it was good for them to get it all out. I hope you're right. Yeah, we blew it. She hates us. 
So, this Zack guy, you still like him? <laughs> wow. You went there, huh? Maybe. He's never given me a reason not to. calls, no letters. Oh. Leaving you out in the cold like this? Forget about that loser. <laughs> he's a soldier, right? Then I hate to break it to you. But if he's been gone this long, the man is dead. Cloud? Sorry. I'm gonna go lie down. Well, that clears that up. He definitely doesn't know who Zack is. Huh. Another time. Yeah, so that brings up a really interesting question. So, at the end of, um, at the end of Crisis Core, it's inferred that Aerith knows that Zack died. Um, but this is remake continuity. So we don't 100% know that Aerith knows that Zack is dead, right? It seems like during that conversation, Aerith was kind of like wishfully hoping that Zack is still alive, but like also accepting he's probably dead. But then when Cloud said he's a soldier, so obviously if he's not around by now, he's dead. And then he walked away. Aerith said, obviously, he doesn't know who Zack is. So from that, we can infer that she thinks he's alive. She's saying, like, obviously, you don't know who Zack is. Zack is so powerful, there ain't no way he's dead. So seems like we're actually specifically going against the, um, the Crisis Core telling. And Aerith specifically thinks she's he's alive which is interesting how would you read that sentence she said obviously he doesn't know who zach is after he said he's probably dead so i mean how else do you read that He, she was looking at Tifa when she said that. Well, yeah, but she was talking about Cloud. I read it as Tifa and Aerith have been talking about Zack and what happened five years ago, and now they know Cloud doesn't remember it. Oh, okay. No, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So that wasn't in reference to what Cloud said. That was just something that she wanted to say to Tifa, but she wasn't going to say it until Cloud walked off. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. See, because what I was saying... That's what I read from it, but I didn't... That felt confusing to me, because it, it feels like they want to go with uh, Crisis Core. Like, it feels like they want to stick pretty close to what happened in Crisis Core. Like, it is a different continuity, but at the same time, like... 
When I say it's a different continuity, it doesn't mean that Crisis Core didn't happen. I just mean to say, like, this is kind of starting over, but, like, there's always the chance that it's a quote-unquote sequel and all this happened after the original and, you know, all that crazy stuff that we're not going to get into until it's actually confirmed. But it's a different continuity in that there is a very good chance that this is its own thing and no other thing from any of the Final Fantasy games technically happened. Or it could have all happened. We don't know. So that's what, when I say it's a different continuity, it's like it is not confirmed that Crisis Core literally happened the exact way we saw it in this game. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Um, but having said that, I think there's a reason that they remade Crisis Core, and I think there's a reason that a lot of the stuff follows Crisis Core, because I think they want us to infer that Crisis Core happened. In one way or another, Crisis Core happened, and so here we are. So if we go by that, Aerith does think that Zack is dead, but there's two problems with that. One, the Whispers stole her memories or whatever, so she might not remember that she thinks that Zack is dead. And two, we still don't know exactly what's going on with the multiple timeline thing and whether or not this is actually Aerith or a different Aerith. Like, there's still, like, all these crazy questions. So there's a chance that this Aerith doesn't know Zack is dead. There's a chance that this Aerith forgot that Zack is dead. Like, there's a lot of different things. So, but it's in that, that conversation was still pretty interesting. And everything up until that last sentence, which I think you're right, I think that was just her confirming with Tifa that Cloud doesn't remember Zack. So if we throw that out, pretty much everything she said made it seem like she thinks Zack is potentially alive, which is really interesting. Again, we don't know if the scene from Crisis Core happened in this continuity. It probably did, but we do not know for sure that it did. But regardless, she could have forgotten it, so yeah. Seems like right now Aerith does not know what's going on with Zack. Which scene? There's a the, the very last scene of Crisis Core. Uh, Aerith is in the church, and she looks up at the sky. And then the second Zack dies, it pans into her, and she's like ma makes like a face, and then she starts to cry. So it's inferred that she had the same exact connection with Zack as she did with uh, Elmira's husband. Because remember. Elmira's husband dies, and then she tells Elmira, like, your husband just died, and she's like, what are you talking about? And then the Turks come in, and they're like, by the way, your husband died. So it's inferred that she had the same exact connection, so she knew when Zack died, because she could feel it. The Earth told her, or whatever. So, uh, yeah, but again, you know, we don't know, A, that that scene happened in this continuity, and B, she remembers it, so. Pretty interesting. Interesting. I wonder if... We're going to expand, like, if, if at one point she's going to say for sure that she thinks Zack is alive. Also, Cloud's response to that was pretty wild, huh? Like, in the original, he kind of, from what I remember, he is, he kind of says nothing, or, like, he doesn't do a very good job of consoling her. But I'm 99% sure he doesn't say, yeah, Zack's probably dead. <laughs> like, I do not remember that. That was pretty, uh... That was to the point, huh? And it's weird because Cloud in general is a lot nicer and more empathetic in this game. Is that is that one of the lines you can pick, maybe? I gotta look this up. Because I feel like there's two lines you can pick. And isn't one of them, like, meaner? Let's see. Okay, this is how the this is exactly how the conversation goes in OG, and this is only if Aerith is in your party. Uh, Cloud says Aerith. Aerith says, "What a shock! I didn't know Zach was from this town. You know him? Didn't I tell you he was my first love?" Dot dot dot. Zach, soldier first cl class, same as Cloud. Strange, there aren't that many who make first class, but I've never heard of him. 
That's all right. It's all in the past now. I was just worried because I heard he's been missing. Missing? I think it was five years ago. He went out on a job and never came back. He loved women, a real ladies' man. He probably found someone else. Hey, is something wrong? And then your two options are either poor guy or parentheses, jealous, envious, which I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it, I think it, like, it's like he's thinking that, but he doesn't say it. Um, if you say poor guy, she says, I don't really mind that I haven't heard from him, but I feel for his parents. And if you say jealous, envious, then she says, are you jealous? Mm -hmm. Are you cloud? And then she says, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. And then let's go. So nothing around even basically their conversation is what they talk about in the house before they walk out. So none of that conversation happened in the original. Um, also, there's kind of a, a bit of a retcon, you could say, or just you could chalk it up to like Aerith lying. But her saying, uh, I think it was five years ago, he went out on a job and never came back. That's like not true. Like she knows. So like either Crisis Core changed it or she's lying. I would, I would say that Crisis Core changed it. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, none of that happens in the original. So pretty interesting. It, because Cloud is more empathetic in this one. So it's weird that he said that. It's almost like he just had a mind screw, like because of his headache or whatever. He was just like not thinking about what he said or something. <laughs> Thanks, Jeeves. Maybe he's a bit more jealous. I don't know. It's weird because like. I'm really curious to see what happens with the love triangle, because I'm getting the impression in this game that. Because like in the original, the idea whether or not because everyone kind of reads it differently and everyone feels differently about it, but the main. The main thought process behind the love triangle is that Cloud likes Aerith more than Tifa in the beginning. Because the whole story between Cloud and Tifa doesn't make sense, and it feels like she's lying, or it feels like she's holding something back, and it's like, what's going on with Tifa? And at the same time, he's still very much Zack. So he's falling in love with Aerith because he's Zack, and Zack loves Aerith. And then, when City happens... He's heartbroken, so he can't be with Tifa because he's heartbroken. And then the scene with Tifa happens and he becomes real Cloud and that's when he starts to have feelings for Tifa again. That's how the original love triangle works, whether or not you decide differently because of your feelings towards one or the other. But that's how it's originally supposed to be written, right? So, but in this game, it feels like Tifa and Cloud are much closer much closer like they are super cold in the original even if you're nice to Tifa as much as you possibly can be and you go on the Tifa date the Tifa date itself is still pretty cold like Tifa kind of goes for it and Cloud is just like can't react because he still feels like Zack and he also feels like she's lying or something is wrong so um they like, it's really cold in the original. In this one, we have several times where they have like very emotional moments together. They have an argument, but then they make up afterwards. There's the part where they're holding hands in the gold saucer. And I think that's potentially optional because a lot of people were saying they got a different scene. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go too far into that until after we finish, but seems like that's optional. But yeah, there's like way more. I mean, you can tell they're they're pushing that relationship more. Uh, both in positives and negatives, like they get together better, but they also argue more. So it's like more of an important relationship. Um, whereas Cloud and Aerith, 
it feels like there's almost nothing there unless you create it. So I'm curious to see where they go. I'm very curious to see, are we ever going to have a moment where Cloud actually starts to really fall for Aerith? Or is it going to be just uh, they're really good friends and, she, and he cares about her a lot? Like, because in the original, I definitely got the vibe that he was falling in love with her, or at least like way closer than friends. You know what I mean? Like there is, she is extremely important to him by the time she dies. So like it completely obliterates him when she dies. I mean, it's not a normal losing of a, of a friend. It's, it's like he's obliterated. So, um, granted, you know, I, I've lost a friend in my life and it obliterated me, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, it felt like there was love there, or at least, and, and it's also compounded by the fact that he thinks that she's the secret to saving the world. At some point, he realizes that she is the last ancient and they need her alive to defeat Sephiroth or save the planet or something. He doesn't learn the true reasons for it until he goes back to city with Bugenhagen and he learns the truth about Meteor and Holy, but he has a, a an inkling that Aerith is super important. So it's like compounded on top of that as well. So, but here, like it, it, it doesn't feel the same. It feels like there's way more scene. I mean, just, just count the amount of scenes that Cloud and Tifa are talking about their relationship, good or bad versus Cloud and Aerith. Cloud and Aerith, we got like, the playground scene in Remake and the scene in her backyard in Remake. And maybe the scene where she's in the dress and Cloud's like, whoa, you're hot. That was all in Remake, but like, that's all I can even think. I can't even think of a scene here, can you? Has there been a scene up to this point where Cloud and Aerith had like a real moment together? I don't think so. So, yeah, it's just interesting. It's definitely going a different route. And there have been multiple with Cloud and Tifa. Non-optional ones. I'm not sure if the if the Gold Saucer one's optional, but a lot of non-optional scenes with Cloud and Tifa, they're very much pushing that relationship. Like I said, good or bad. So... I'm curious. I'm curious to see where that goes. And I like that idea. But uh, it does take away a bit from that original plot point. Because in the original, it's very important that Cloud starts to fall for Aerith. It's one of the main indicators that Cloud is not Cloud. And when they were developing Final Fantasy VII, one of the very first themes they came up with was the love triangle theme. That was like the core of Final Fantasy VII. When you, when you look at like the developer interviews and stuff, when they came up with the idea for Final Fantasy VII, one of the very first ideas they had was a love triangle. They were like, we haven't done a love triangle yet in any of the Final Fantasy games. We feel like we should do something where the player has a choice or the character is struggling with which love interest he wants to be with. That was one of the very first core themes of the game. So it's uh, it's interesting that we're not seeing that as much. Um, you know, we'll wait to see what the date scene is like, but the date scene to me doesn't really count because that's when we get the choice on who to date, so it's not really like canon. It's just us having fun dating whichever character we like the most. Um, but yeah, you, you know, come to think of it, this entire game is more focused on Tifa. Even Sephiroth is talking about Tifa. Sephiroth hasn't said jack about Aerith. He's been talking about Tifa this whole time. Every single time he shows up, is Tifa real? Is she who we think you think she is? So it's, it's kind of just like the whole game is very focused on Tifa. So. Very interesting. I don't, and I don't know. 
I don't know if by the end of the game I'm going to be on board with that, because I do think that the love triangle is a big theme of the original that needs to be construed here, but we're only in Gangaga, so we still got a while for the Aerith, uh, the Aerith relationship to come through. So, uh, you know, don't want to, don't want to say too much now because it might change in the future, but it's definitely been all Tifa up to this point, you know? So, in any case, I think we will stop here for Rebirth today. We're actually over schedule. Um, but yeah, I got, I got some stuff I want to talk to you guys about, but before we do that, Let's say goodbye to YouTube. YouTube, thank you so much for being here for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Hope you've been enjoying the Let's Play. Look forward to reading your comments about everything we talked about today. And overall, we didn't do a lot of story this time. We uh, just explored Gungaga, but uh, it was awesome. I'm loving having these two big open world sections back to back. There's a lot to do. There was a lot to see. Um, Kate Sith is cool and still enjoying all the combat and it was good to do some more combat and excited to fight Kajata for real when I can do damage to him and Gangaga was really cool so still enjoying everything uh like I said look forward to your opinions and we will see you in the next episodes of Let's Play Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth we'll see you there peace